Hello everyone, this is Tom from Los Angeles. I thought I would uh, bring you some of this beautiful sun in this weekend where I'm uh, trying to catch up on a few tags that I've been tagged with. This one is a tag video that I'm, I've been looking forward to. I've been uh, kindly tagged by Christina at uh, Books, Knitting, etc. She lives in Lisbon and she always brings uh, uh, a great um, energy and great uh, out-of-the-box thinking, or at least uh, uh, her uh, cosmopolitan and uh, Portuguese point of view to her discussions about books, which I really love. So thank you, Christina. Uh, originally, this tag was created by uh, Book Time with Elvis, who's been very prolific in uh, creating really interesting tags. So I'm uh, hoping to do this one justice. Let's get started. Number one, theater. Do you read plays? If so, tell us about one of your favorites. I do, but I used to read um, a lot of plays in, in the past, especially in Italian. Italy has a great tradition of uh, theater, a great tradition of um, comedy, of drama, and a little bit tragedy as well, but I would say mainly comedy. And uh, one of my favorite comedies, uh, theater comedies, is by the great uh, Eduardo De Filippo. It's called Natale a Casa Cupiello. They also made a wonderful black and white movie that if you can find it with English subtitles, you absolutely need to watch because it's so incredibly funny. It's about uh, his plays and his writings were always about uh, um, poor people in southern Italy um, around a hundred years ago. But uh, he, the, the, the grace and the humor that he treats this uh, topic with and just uh, his ability because he was, he was also an actor in uh, theater and uh, on TV as well a little bit. He is one of our theater geniuses, together with uh, Pirandello, but Pirandello was a very different kind. So this is my, my vote. Number two, uh, travel. Sadly, we cannot travel these days, that's right. But do you have a favorite travel writer or travel book to take you away on armchair adventures? I do. One of my favorite travel writers, and I love, really love travel writing, is Robert Kaplan. I'm going to present uh, uh, this book today by Robert Kaplan. It's called uh, Eastward to Tartary and um, it's a pleasure. It's a real pleasure uh, because uh, uh, Kaplan is able to mix in a very, um, let's call it uh, intellectual but not academic way, a lot of history with geography. He makes those links between history and geography really really well. Um, in Eastward to Tartary uh, Kaplan takes us on a spellbinding journey into the heart of a little known but volatile region stretching from Romania and Bulgaria to the far shores of the Caspian Sea. So he travels uh, in each country in between. He, it's a journey over land and through history. He interviews people, he goes very deep in the history of... Uh, in my memory this book stays especially for how he described Romania and the history of people who lived under Ceausescu and the interviews that he has with these people who experienced the Ceausescu regime. Very, very fascinating and, uh, of course, a little disturbing sometimes, but uh, it's highly recommended. Let's go to question number three. Time. What book took you the longest time to read and why was that? Uh, well, this one's probably easy. I would say uh, it's a divine comedy because I've uh, never really finished reading it. I, I continue reading it and it's been uh, maybe 12, 13 years since I fell in love with it. So it's, uh, it's a divine comedy, definitely. Number four, traditional. Fairy tales or nursery rhymes, what are some of your favorites and what are some you would not think suitable for kids today? Um, my I don't read a lot of fairy tales. Uh, it's not really a kind of book that I particularly enjoy. Even though uh, sometimes I like the power of a fairy tale embedded in a story to make a point or to make the narrative a little bit deeper. I'm going to make an example from a beautiful uh, graphic novel here. Sergio Toppi is uh, one of the I would say grandmasters of uh, comic book uh, art in Italy, 
is one of the best. And uh, in this uh, book called Cruel, um, he wrote some uh, original fairy tales, a little bit inspired on the classical Andersen tales, but uh, maybe slightly darker, um, with this uh, typical uh, hyper detailed and, uh, and really beautiful free style that um, that it is mesmerizing. It's, I spend uh, minutes, tens of minutes, um, just looking at these pages because how, be how beautiful they are. So that's my example. Number five, tasty. Food, glorious food. What are some of your favorite books about food? Well, um, there's one that I could think of, which is this one. It's called The Banana by Dan Koppel. The fate of the fruit that changed the world. Um, I love this book because uh, it's, uh, it's a non-fiction book and it talks about the history of the banana. A lot of uh, facts and factoids that I wasn't aware about, of. Um, you see history through banana color lenses because you really go through the last uh, century or so through the uh, you see the replacement of uh, some of the apples that used to be on tables of uh, Americans and Westerners with a lot of bananas as well. The refrigeration techniques, the historic uh, problems that uh, the cultivation of uh, bananas in uh, Ecuador and in Central America caused by greed and, and uh, usual stories that we all are aware of. The, the book is really informative and uh, it's, uh, it taught me a lot about bananas. <laughs> um, next one, terrible. Who is a truly terrible, nasty, but memorable character that stands out for you? Um, I had to think a little bit about this because um, I in fiction I love uh, complex characters and, so, and so if there is a character who is just nasty or just terrible, it generally means that that novel is not too interesting to me. But, uh, but then I thought about uh, Trujillo. Trujillo in uh, The Brief Wondrous Life of Oscar Wilde. Wa uh, Oscar wow. And uh, he is a real history character. Um, he was the dictator of uh, the, Republican, the Dominican Republic for 30 years, between 1930 and 60 or 61 or so. And the way that he's portrayed is uh, absolutely terrible uh, by somebody who's uh, the author, um, Juno Diaz, who knows what he's talking about. He's been, uh, uh, he has uh, blood in uh, the Dominican Republic, I believe, and uh, he's been uh, interviewing people about it. In fact, the author himself <clears throat> about this character, or this real person, said um, in a slightly snarky tone. For those of you who missed your mandatory two seconds of Dominican history in school, Trujillo, one of the 20th century most infamous dictators, ruled the Dominican Republic between 1930 and 61 with an implacable ruthless brutality. At first glance, he was just your prototypical Latin American caudillo, but his power was terminal in ways that few historians or writers have ever truly captured or, I would argue, imagined. He was our Sauron, our Aragon, our dark side, our once and future dictator, a personage so outlandish and so perverse and so dreadful that not even a sci-fi writer could have made his ass up. That's uh, the character, I think it's uh, a perfect fit to answer this question. Um, and then we have the next uh, T, T for truth. The truth is often stranger than fiction, they say. Give us some examples of this from your extensive reading. Well, I would say from my extensive reading, uh, uh, an example that I can bring is from this uh, um, not very well-known book called uh, The Elephant Whisperer by Lawrence Anthony with Graham Spence. Uh, it's a book about uh, South Africa and uh, a reservation in South Africa where uh, Lawrence Anthony, the author, uh, used to keep elephants. So the book is really about elephants and their life uh, in the wild, in captivity in South Africa and how their relationship with uh, 
the environment works and with each other as well. There's a lot of great information about elephants. One um, piece of information that really struck me uh, in the sense of uh, truth being stranger than fiction, I'd never known be this before, is that it's been uh, proven with science that uh, elephants have uh, a way of communicating with each other that uses the vibration and the grumbling of, the, of a part of their stomachs, that the vibrations are so low frequency that they can hear each other at unimaginable distances, miles and miles away. And uh, to me, this sounds like pure science fiction, some of the best science fiction, uh, but it's true. It's a true fact. And um, I don't know if it was me being ignorant and not knowing this, but uh, I had to look it up again because I, I thought it was so strange and, uh, and fascinating how evolution has created this uh, incredible way to communicate for them. At this point, I need to, according to the, the prompts, I need to make up my own for the next people that I'm going to tag. But before that, I need to answer Christina's question, which was really uh, cool. Uh, she asked uh, T for teleportation. Where would you be willing to teleport? What's the first place that you would be willing to uh, teleport yourself um, if you could right now? My obvious answer is uh, Italy, because that's where my family is, okay? But uh, if it wasn't for that, and if it wasn't for how much I miss them because of the COVID situation, etc., uh, I really believe that Lisbon in Portugal would be my, uh, my first uh, choice. Uh, I've never been there, and uh, everyone I know who is uh, visited uh, tell me it's such a lovely, beautiful gem of a town to visit. So that's where I, I would love to go. My... Um, I'm gonna tag people below, but uh, my T is gonna be 20th, meaning 20th century. Please give me a book that uh, uh, talks about uh, the, the 20th century. In a, in a, it doesn't need to be historic, uh, it could be any genre really, but it gives uh, an overview of the 20th century or that talks about the 20th century in a particular way. So that's uh, my tag and the names are gonna be down below. Thank you everyone, I hope you enjoyed this one and thanks for watching, bye.